Hi, I'm IGFA Conservation Director Jason Schratweiser, and I'm very excited to announce IGFA's partnership with Stanford University on the IGFA Great Marlin Race. Thanks to the leadership of our chairman, Packy O'Field, and working together with billfish tournaments and anglers, we have the goal of deploying 50 satellite tags and marlin around the world each year. Since its inception in 1939, IGFA has had a long history working with scientists to help advance our knowledge of the world's game fish. IGFA founder Michael Lerner understood the need to utilize recreational angling as a way to collect information on fish. In addition to building a biological laboratory in the Bahamas, Lerner also conducted several extensive fishing expeditions to remote areas around the world. Scientists were invited to accompany him on these expeditions, which provided a wealth of information on what were then considered to be poorly known species of pelagic fishes, such as tunas, billfishes, and sharks. Much has changed in the world of fishing and science since the early days of IGFA. Still, there is a need for more and better data for proper fisheries management, which is why we are so pleased to be working with scientists from Barbara Block's lab in Stanford University. These individuals are some of the very best in the field of satellite telemetry, and the information that we will obtain from the tagging will be shared with other scientists and fisheries managers to help develop better management and protection for these magnificent fish. In addition to sharing tagging data with other scientists, these data will also be shared with anglers in the IGFA Great Marlin Race website, where they will be able to see graphical representations of how these fish moved over time. Thanks for your interest in the IGFA Great Marlin Race. I'll now turn it over to Drs. Randy Kochivar and George Schillinger so that they can talk more about the history of the Great Marlin Race, as well as provide expert instruction on how to properly tag and release fish. The Great Marlin Race is a collaboration between our research program at Stanford University and the IGFA, the International Game Fish Association, and angling tournaments around the world where we engage anglers and give them the opportunity to participate in this process where we tag billfish and we follow them on their migrations. The Great Marlin Race originated at Stanford University in the laboratory of Dr. Barbara Block. Uh, it was catalyzed through work that was done over the last decade for the Tagging of Pacific Pelagics program, which was a program of the Census of Marine Life. A number of donors and billfish enthusiasts collaborated with Stanford to launch the first ever race at the 50th anniversary of the Hawaiian International Billfish Tournament, which was founded by Peter Fithian over 50 years ago. Bob Kurz from Laguna Niguel Billfish Club, Randy Kochivar from Stanford, uh, myself, and Dr. Barbara Block worked together with a number of anglers, including uh, Packy O'Field, who helped to underwrite many of the tags for the race and really kicked the race into high gear uh, to where it is today. The concept of the Great Marlin Race is that we give angling teams the opportunity to sponsor one of these satellite tags to be placed on marlin during the tournament. And the marlin that travels the greatest distance from the point where it was tagged to the point where the tag comes off wins the race. For the Great Marlin Race, we've been using pop-up archival tags. These tags can collect temperature and depth data, and we can also examine movement data through light and through algorithms. And these tags uh, are programmed in the lab prior to the, uh, the beginning of the race and our team arrives on the scene at the Great Marlin Race equipped with tags and packages and deployment sheets for the anglers where we ask anglers to complete forms providing basic what we call metadata 
about the tagging location, the condition of the fish, the type of line that was used, the lure that was used, and where the fish was caught, and a number of other uh, features uh, associated with that deployment. The next type of tag we put out is called the PSAT, which is a uh, stands for a pop-off satellite archival tag. And these are the tags that you read about that uh, uh, after a certain period of time that's programmed by the scientists, these tags come off, they record a certain amount of information. We get to have daylight, uh, amount of daylight, so we know uh, where, when the fish is feeding, what depth they're feeding, um, what the water temperature is, and we can glean from those kinds of information um, where the fish has been. So we'll be able to approximate a latitude and longitude from the PSAT tags. You know, learning where these animals go and what these animals do is really the most basic question we can ask about their life history. And in many cases, a fish that you see at one point where it goes after that, where it goes in the month and months and years following that is oftentimes completely unknown. And so what we're trying to do is to provide that most basic level of understanding of the biology of these animals, helping us to understand how they use the open ocean environment in which they live. The tagging techniques and methods uh, for p putting pop-up tags and other devices on marlin and other pelagics have improved increasingly over the years, and what we're finding is really great success rates now. We're getting tags back from fish that have been at liberty for many months to years in certain cases. So we know these fish are surviving the capture and the release, and for that matter, uh, the process of, of bearing a tag. In the weeks leading up to a tournament, we sit down and we program all of these tags so we know exactly how long the duration of deployment is going to be and everything else. We'll hand these over to the anglers, they'll be ready to go and they'll start collecting data as soon as they're deployed on a fish. Once a tag is placed on a marlin, there's a sheet that comes with that tag that has the tag number on it. There's a number of slots that need to be filled out, the most important ones being date, time, location, and then the condition of the fish. There are slots for a lot of more information. If the angler has the opportunity to give us more information, we'll definitely use it. But those are the most key factors. So when we arrive at the docks in Hawaii, the first thing we do is we uh, hand the anglers these tubes. And within the tube, we have a data sheet and a tag. This is an MK10 uh, wildlife computer pop-up tag. A uh, quick description of the tag, what you see here is an over-the-side titanium dart. This is what goes into the fish and is our point of attachment. This dart is connected to some very heavy monofilament line, which is shrink-wrapped here with, uh, with a label that indicates uh, where the tag is from and uh, also has a reward should the tag be recovered and provides a number as well, which is essentially a substitute for the IGFA tag, so there's no need to tag these fish twice. This tag, this leader here is, is good enough. This uh, leader is then attached to the tag. As you can see here, this is where we have a, the corrosible pen, corrosible pen that comes off, uh, burns basically off. The tag will detach. Microprocessors housed here within the tag. This is the communications port, this white plastic tab. We, we, uh, we basically program the tag through this port then place this tab in here to seal the communication port. And eventually later, if we should recover the tag, we'll take this off. Um, the, a couple of the other sensors on the tag include this pressure sensor here and this light sensor here. And then we, this is the float for the tag, which makes the tag positively buoyant. And this is the saltwater switch, which indicates that the tag is in the water and ready to go or has, has come to the surface. And then, of course, we have this antenna, which is very pliable and has been subject to lots of innovation over the years. All of the tags will have a piece of tape that uh, we, we uh, mark up in the lab that, that basically provides some general information, the number of the tag, when it was programmed, and whether the, what mode the tag is in. This piece of tape, we ask that anglers put this on the data sheet uh, right here, and that this piece of tag will be consistent also with all of the other information um, that we have uh, on this on these tags.
The most important things to be filling out on this sheet are his information about the date, the time, the latitude, the longitude, and a little bit about the condition of the fish. There's a lot of space to put other information in if you have time. We'll use every piece of it, but the most critical things are that date and time, latitude and longitude, and something about the condition. The more information that we have about the fish, the better job we're going to be able to do to understand the data that eventually comes off the tag that that fish carried with it. Placement of the tags on the fish is very important. As a rule, we like to see the tags placed up high on the dorsal, below the dorsal fin, probably set about 10 centimeters back from the leading edge of the dorsal fin. This enables the tag to ride nicely behind the fish with minimal drag. And it also minimizes the risk of potentially tagging the fish in, a, in an organ or in the bloodline. So when we get to the dock, uh, we'll give the anglers this tagging kit but we'll also give them a tagging pole along with an applicator tip. These applicator tips are manufactured by an organization company that works closely with the lab, and these are custom-made tagging poles based on years of experience by uh, tag technicians in the lab. From the time the tag comes out of the tagging tube uh, until the time that it's actually placed on a fish, you need to be keeping in mind that, uh, that this is a really expensive and also fairly delicate piece of equipment. So you want to just take care to make sure that it's not being exposed to extreme heat, that it's not being placed somewhere where it can get stepped on or where it's going to be bouncing around the deck, or worse yet, where it runs the risk of falling overboard and ending up in the ocean. Tip screws in like this. And this is, uh, we each of, each of the tagging kits will contain this tip, and then these little uh, insets as well come on, attached and on the poles. So everything here is, custom, as I said, is custom made. Make sure that your pole is securely fastened, so each of these pieces, all three pieces, are secure. And then try not to poke anyone in the eye. Once the tagging pole is assembled, the final step in this process of being ready to deploy a tag is to actually attach the tag to the pole. Thank you, Randy. So we attach the tag, the, the dart, to the applicator tip. We take a rubber band, and these will be included in the bags. We double the rubber band up. I try and turn the tag so the light sensor is facing out. As a matter of preference, I slide the rubber band. We slide the rubber band down the pole, secure it to the float here. So the tag is, the tether is relatively taut. The tag is flush with the pole, and then we put an extra security loop. You can just do this by tying a rubber band around the end of the stick here. And there are different ways to do this as well, but I find a really simple, fast way is just to tie it like this. And this basically ensures that the uh, tag won't fall off the stick when you're in the process of deployment. In the event that this rubber band were to come loose, at least you'd still have a second point of attachment on the pole. What you see here is a fully assembled tagging stick with the tag attached and locked and loaded and ready to go. As I mentioned before, what you want to do when you uh, have the fish on is carefully follow the lead of your leader man and your first mate and captain. And uh, when, you, when the opportunity arises to tag the fish and you have the fish at the rail, what I typically do is try and keep both hands on the grips, depending on where the fish is. And you know, of course, this is all going to be subject to what's happening at that moment when you're about to tag. But the grips do provide a ni nice traction. Then lean over the rail and insert the tag, as I previously described, right below the dorsal fin and into the dorsal musculature and into the turgy of fours where it sticks. And you want to give it a very hard, a hard, you want to come over the top of the fish, insert it almost perpendicularly, point it forward, and give it a very hard single stick. And then pull the pole back, and the, the tag uh, will release, of course, from the pole and be embedded in the fish. At which point, then, it's up to the leader man and the crew to uh, either continue to revive or release the fish. Bring the fish in as quickly as possible. Uh, we have found that there is a 
better survivorship of these uh, magnificent fish if you uh, get them to the boat and uh, get them released as quickly as you possibly can. The moment you stick that tag in the fish will be the last time you see that animal. From that point on begins the record keeping. Once everybody has given everybody high fives, the next thing is to, to sit down with the record sheet, make note of the date, make note of the time, make note of your position, the latitude and the longitude, and then any notes that you can make about how did the fish do, were there any signs of injuries, how was it when it swam away. This will help us understand the data when we finally get it back off that tag. The main goal of the Great Marlin Race is to provide the best possible data about the migrations and the behavior of these animals in the wild. And the mission of the race is to put this data to good use for the conservation and management of billfish stocks worldwide. You can't do anything to conserve these species unless you know where they are and why they're there. And recreational anglers are our number one constituency for doing this work. No one cares more about the health of billfish stocks than they do.